you tell me about what geriatric medicine was like when you started as a, an SHO? My very first job, um, substantive post, was in geriatric medicine. That was in 1983, and uh, it was in in Derby. And those days, geriatric patients were admitted to the worst possible uh, kind of setups, uh, basically, and the geriatric medicine departments were usually in what used to be uh, establishments where what were called the workhouses sometimes. And uh, in Derby there was a hospital called Manor Hospital. Manor Hospital was about 600 bedded, I think, hospital. It's a huge uh, hospital, very poorly staffed, and there were people who have been there for since the 1930s. The um, there was a encephalitis epidemic in the 1930s, uh, apparently, and some of the people who survived that were still there. So obviously, they were in very terrible neurological kind of with disabilities and so on, and uh, and the staffing levels were appalling, and. Uh, and obviously geriatric medicine was uh, in general was not very not, was not very well supported and the even worse thing was that if you are over 65 you were considered at, as geriatric and you you were effectively denied of all the modern treatments you know basically if you are 65 plus you are not allowed to go to the coronary care unit for example you were admitted to geriatric unit, which didn't have coronary care unit. So it was not good. Uh, the geriatric, if you are elderly person, you were effectively quite significantly discriminated, and uh, you didn't get the best possible treatment. Uh, although geriatric medicine had some really very dedicated consultants, and the, in fact, the consultant with whom I worked was fantastic, and she was really. She worked very hard for the welfare of elderly people and made a number of important changes there to improve the care of elderly people. Well, I came to Cardiff in 1984 and it was such a refreshing change uh, because Professor Pathy was the professor of geriatric medicine in Cardiff and he was, you can call him the father of geriatric medicine in Cardiff and, uh, and the geriatric medicine in Cardiff was probably one of the best geriatric medicine departments in the world and uh, people used to come from all over the world to see what we did and we used to have regular rotations with doctors from Ireland and Australia and so on. We even had doctors coming from Chile and Brazil and so it was a world famous uh, department you know effectively and um, you know, the, the, the great thing about the geriatric department here was that uh, elderly people were not discriminated. They got as good a care, even if sometimes even better care than younger people. Uh, we had the same kind of problems in Cardiff because, you know, if you're over 65, you couldn't go to coronary care unit. So. What Professor Pathy did, he started a coronary care unit in West Wing of Cardiff Royal Infirmary, which had better monitoring facilities and equipment than the actual coronary care unit in the University Hospital. So elderly people got the best possible care. In fact, we thrombolized patients for MI in that unit, and uh, they had high dependency kind of facility there, and we had a fantastic multidisciplinary team, and. Uh, he even started a stroke unit uh, in the late 70s uh, in Cardiff, probably one of, probably the second stroke unit in, in the country after M Manchester or uh, I think Manchester was probably the first with Professor Brocklehurst. So, um, you know, we had a fantastic uh, geriatric uh, unit set up, but having said that, the uh, longer term patients were still managed in these what were workhouse kind of uh, places, uh, St. David's Hospital, Glanily Hospital and so on. Uh, I don't know, Glanily Hospital was probably not a workhouse, but I think St. David's was some kind of workhouse, uh, some part of St. David's 
uh, in the olden days. Uh, but Professor Patti somehow managed to get a ward in the main hospital uh, um, in the early 80s. And in fact, my first job was in that hospital, university hospital ward actually. And uh, we did face a lot of uh, uphill struggle to get the best possible care for elderly people because every time we asked for a specialized scan or any kind of investigation, we had to really justify it very strongly to get that thing done for mm -hmm. elderly people. Because there's still a degree of ageism those days. But I think over the years, uh, things have gradually improved. And in the mid-90s, the uh, geriatric medicine integrated with general medicine. That was the trend in the early 90s, mid 90s. Um, something that probably started in Oxford and then, you know, kind of became a more common practice in other parts of the world. I mean, the idea was that um, elderly people should be receiving exactly the same treatment as younger people, so they should not be discriminated based just on the age. And then they should be managed by people who have expertise in those particular areas of. Um, disease of elderly people. So, so in Cardiff we have modelled our service along those lines. So we have people who are interested in osteoporosis, people who are interested in stroke, people who are interested in Parkinson's disease, um, and people who are interested in wound care and um, so on. So we have got people who do general medicine uh, and, uh, when they do on call, but they practice a specialised aspect of geriatric medicine which has worked very well and I think uh, the great thing about geriatric medicine is that unlike other specialties your patients are always very thankful for whatever you do for them and, and they are very grateful you will never get any kind of um, um, abuse or anything like that they are always very very thankful for anything that is done for them and so that's one uh, satisfying aspect of it. And also, I think that's the only specialty where you get to see the true general medicine. You see a wide spectrum of um, medical conditions and uh, because we have become more and more super specialized these days and you don't get to see the proper general medicine. And this is the only specialty where you get to see challenging general medical kind of clinical scenarios. Do you think there has been a change in the perception of geriatricians over this time as well? Oh, definitely. I mean, the um, perception in the 70s and, well, I don't know about the 70s, but certainly in the 80s, uh, somehow the geriatricians were considered to be kind of second-rate uh, doctors uh, by their peers. But I think with the introduction of the Kalman uh, training scheme, uh, I think it reassured people that people were, you know, the doctors were properly trained as um, junior doctors and to become physicians and um, everybody's reassured that you, know, you couldn't become a consultant without getting at least basic level of training and therefore I think that to some extent reassured our peers and colleagues that you know, they are also like everybody else they are properly trained physicians and therefore and also the integration with general medicine has also helped in reducing this misconception that somehow the geriatricians are secondary physicians and uh, you know in fact I have worked with some of the greatest physicians uh, who are geriatricians and you know great diagnosticians and great physicians overall so I think that's a completely wrong perception but I think that's largely uh, gone now and um, I mean, you know, we are getting more and more um, really high profile, uh, really bright young doctors taking up geriatric medicine because they see that this is a field with uh, a lot of future because what we know is that the you know, population is aging and there will be more and more elderly people, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the community. And if you look at the takes, medical takes, and the population of uh, hospitalized patients, 
majority of them are in their 80s and in fact a lot of, I would say about 20 to 25 percent of them are, people are in their 90s now. Mm. So the aging population means that we are going to see more and more elderly people and we definitely need more uh, people with expertise in managing these elderly people properly. And, and thinking of your specialist area in stroke medicine, obviously there's been rapid advances in that in, in the last sort of decade or so. How different is it now compared to the 1980s for stroke care? Oh, it's unimaginably different. You know, stroke medicine, when I took up stroke medicine, nobody wanted to do stroke because it was a kind of a dead-end job, you know, because, you know, you couldn't really do much for stroke patients and that was the perception. That once somebody had a stroke, uh, they basically lingered on these long stay wards forever uh, without much happening to them and uh, um, certainly in some other parts of the world but in Cardiff we had a stroke unit when I came to uh, you know, Cardiff it was already there and we had a proper specialist multidisciplinary team and therefore it was not as bad as that but certainly still you know it was not one of the most sought after specialties because people felt that there was really nothing much to can be done for the patients from a medical point of view and in fact I remember going to the World Health Organization's um, stroke a meeting in Helsingborg in 95 and I think there were about 150 people from all over the world and and we had two days of uh, conference there and um, a Helsingborg declaration came out with lots of aspirations as to what should happen in the next 20 years but in terms of as to what we can do now the only thing that we could offer to stroke patients was aspirin and nothing else and I remember coming out of that meeting really depressed and say you know you know why did I take up this specialty you know there's nothing we can do for patients but I mean we could see the prospects of evolving treatments so even then that you know there were uh, things in the horizon which promised a lot and uh, you know the major advances have been the introduction of thrombolysis and which meant that patients are getting into the right place in the right time and it's not just thrombolysis they're getting the multidisciplinary treatment within a few hours of onset of their stroke and that definitely has a major impact on outcome just not just the thrombolysis and the you know, more recently the introduction of the clot ret retrieval uh, you know uh, that is a very exciting area we certainly in Cardiff have had very good experience with that particular treatment because we've got a very good interventional uh, neuroradiologist uh, we've got two of them here and the results have been fantastic and although there is no kind of major randomized clinical trial which has shown beyond doubt that it works we have from our experience, you know, I must say that uh, we have no doubt that it works. And I mean, physiologically speaking, or pathophysiologically speaking, there is no reason why it should not work because you are re establishing circulation. And if you do it within a very short period of time, that's got to be better than just uh, giving a thrombolytic drug which may or may not remove the clot or lyse the clot. The other advances uh, have been in the field of prevention. I mean, particularly the introduction of anticoagulation for atrial fibrillation is a fantastic uh, you know um, uh, intervention because the benefits are tremendous and consistent in every major clinical trial and it is applicable to the highest risk population the very elderly people people who are over the age of 80 years and therefore it's going to have a major impact on the incidence of stroke in probably about a third of the patients really because that's what we have seen in the SNAP audit of the Royal College of Physicians, which showed um, about 30% of the patients were admitted with acute ischemic stroke had atrial fibrillation, which is probably a contributing factor for the majority of them. So that's been one big area, and also the recognition of the um, value of carotid endarterectomy in symptomatic stenosis. Um, so they, they are the two important preventive uh, strategies and also the um, other antiplatelet regimes like using clopidogrel and so on. And the exciting thing was we were part of all these major clinical trials and so we took part in many of these major clinical trials and uh, so it is exciting to see it has changed our clinical practice. 
So, uh, yeah, the management of stroke patients has undergone tremendous change and uh, TIA is now recognized as a medical emergency and acute stroke is recognized as, me as a medical emergency, which is unthinkable 20, 25 years ago. So, that's very satisfying to see and, you know, we, we are, you know, we, the great thing is that we were part of that change. Uh, that, that is really exciting. Everyone in Cardiff speaks very fondly of Professor Pathy. I wonder if you can tell us a bit more about him, how he worked, and what he was like to work with. Oh, he was an amazing, as a man, um, he was an amazing man. He was a true gentleman. You know, he was very, very polite with anybody, even if it was a houseman, he would be extremely polite, true gentleman. He, you know, if he meets you, uh, on the corridor, he would stop, and he has got time for you, and he would inquire about you and you know uh, your welfare, and he will plan for your career and everything. So you know it's very unusual to see that kind of people who are in such a high position. And he was internationally renowned. Um, you know, um, before he retired, I mean, you know, he was all around the world. He was invited to give talks and so on. As you know, he's written the textbook of geriatric medicine, which is one of the best sellers in the field of geriatric medicine. Uh, I mean, I was his registrar and senior registrar later on, and you know, I learned a tremendous amount of uh, you know very good aspects of geriatric medicine from him. And uh, as I said, you know, he he is practically responsible for every aspect of geriatric medicine in Wales, and it is because of his farsightedness. You know, we've got a fantastic department in Cardiff and also in Wales, you know, he is essentially responsible for developing geriatric medicine throughout Wales. There was a lot of resistance, uh, you know, for developing geriatric medicine because there were, you know, in those years, you know, in the 70s and 80s, people, some people still didn't feel that geriatric medicine should be a specialized subject, you know, they didn't recognize that as a a specialized subject and there was a lot of resistance from some very high profile people and he had to fight against that and you know prove uh, prove it to the Welsh assembly uh, the uh, those days it was called Welsh office the Welsh office uh, which is the Welsh equivalent of Welsh government now that we really need geriatric medicine and so single-handedly really develop geriatric medicine throughout Wales so I mean you know he, he was a great man Certainly, I mean, uh, um, you don't come across such people very often. And, you know, you mentioned sort of MDT working. Mm -hmm. How has that changed over the course of your career? Well, I think in Cardiff there was a well set up multidisciplinary kind of structure already. And, you know, we really truly functioned as a multi um, kind of disciplinary team. Having said that, um, in the 80s or, and even in up to mid-90s or so, it was mainly consultant-led who basically ran the whole show. And, you know, what has evolved is that it has become truly multidisciplinary now with each discipline contributing equally. Uh, I think that has been the biggest change from what I've seen. And, uh, I mean, we, we have, otherwise we have had multidisciplinary, you know, function, you know, team has been around in Cardiff for a long time, so I don't think that's been a big change, but I think it has become much more democratic now, I suppose, and uh, uh, I think that's the only uh, difference, really. We have always had very effective multidisciplinary team, and one of the great things those days was that we had a social worker as part of our team, and we lost social worker as part of our team probably about 10 years ago, and that's a big loss. Something that has to be addressed, really. Thinking where our SHROs are now, so sort of similar to when you came into geriatric medicine, when they are uh, consultants in geriatric medicine, how do you think that the specialty will be different uh, you know, in 20 years from now? Well, I think the way things are going at the moment, certainly in Wales, uh, there is a trend towards managing geriatric medicine mainly in the community. I think that's the way it is heading. I think a majority of the elderly people will be probably managed in the community and uh, only 
people who really need to come into the hospital will end up coming into hospital and when they need specialized treatments. I think the uh, emphasis is on boosting the kind of community services and um, support elderly people to stay in the community as long as possible, which I think is not a bad thing really because when they when the elderly people come to hospital they probably uh, catch other infections and uh, or become more immobile and so on for various reasons and therefore it's best for them to be in their own environment if at all possible as long as possible uh, as long as it is safe so that that's uh, I think the future for the I think it's going to be more more and more community based and um, with highly specialized uh, kind of people who require highly specialized treatment coming up to the hospital but I think it is still you know going to be a very satisfying uh, area to work in because you are managing patient as a whole rather than one little organ in the body or something like that you know it's your it's a holistic kind of approach to managing patients or people. Just sort of to finish really having started working in geriatric medicine in the 1980s and it's now uh, coming at the end of 2014 uh, do you still enjoy it? Absolutely I have never uh, regretted taking up this specialty because I think it's one of the most satisfying um, areas of medicine and I work in stroke medicine and people are sometimes very disabled but we can also make a huge difference to their quality of life and uh, to give an example you know we uh, had a patient who um, an elderly gentleman who came with right hemiplegia and aphasia and uh, he came within the treatment window so within one and a half hours so we thrombolized him and then he had a big clot in his middle cerebral artery on the left side so we offered him the clot retraction treatment he agreed to go ahead with it so my neuroradiology colleague uh, removed the clot he walked home after three days and see this is unthinkable uh, you know even ten years ago this patient would have been wheelchair bound aphasic for the rest of his life and he sent me a card and uh, he said you gave me my quality of life back you will never be forgotten see I mean what else do you want as a doctor you know I can't think of anything else that you can ask for I mean th this is why I say you know we are working in a fantastic specialty we are making a difference to our patients okay well thank you very much for taking time out of your day to have a chat